Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. You have to love the blue suit. What's wrong with the blue suit? I want to I try and get a, a red one. I know Mark from Shannon's, he loves it. said that uh, it reminded him of something out of the banana splits. So made a big impact on him. Uh, speaking of big impact, this day now, talking about the fair lane behind me, I didn't know when I was going to start talking about that because it was one of these cars, I, I guess, that I thought I was going to buy and keep forever. And that is true because I am keeping it. Um, but today, the Fairlane officially goes into retirement at a graceful 733,000 kilometres. Um, this car is like an arm to me, it's, it's a limb. It's one of your children almost. It represents so much of your life. A lot has happened in my 18 years. 18 years is a lot for everyone and things can happen family circumstances, mechanical circumstances. You might have a car every few years. Just not many people keep a car and drive it every day for 18 years. And I'm, I'm not talking about getting a car and just running it down to the railway station every day. Um, I'm catching a train to work, for example. This car here was an interstater. And uh, you speak to some people and, oh yeah, we had a good run out of our car. It went to Queensland twice. You think, went to Queensland twice? Wow, I, I've had times where those kilometres, this fair lane was doing that every three weeks. I got the car in 2000, it was just on four years old, and I saw it in a, a car yard at Bowral in the Southern Highlands, New South Wales. And it was like brand new, seriously it was. Getting this car meant so much, and I can remember when I did get it, I'd sit in the driveway at night and just look at all the lights on the dashboard and think, wow, I couldn't believe I was in a five litre fair lane. And 61,000 Ks, when I saw it for the first time in the glove box, I went straight to the owner's manual and uh, there was a company in there that owned it. So I took the details down, went home and, and I called the company. I said, oh look, you know, you've just traded a fair lane. And the guy said, oh yes, the silver fair lane. That was our general manager's car. He said, great car, you won't go wrong. I said, good. And I uh, said, it seems to be in good condition. And he just explained that the company policy was that strict, right down to sales reps, that all the company cars have to be uh, incredibly cared for, to the point where they could almost lose their jobs if they didn't. So that, that kind of sold me. Um, during the, uh, the 18 years of the Fairlane, uh, it let me down on the side of the road once when I required a tilt bed. It was about 11 o'clock at night coming back from Sydney and the fuel pump went. And I can remember that was at 300 and 23,000 Ks. This car behind me now at 733,000 has still got the second fuel pump in it. It's the only time it actually physically stopped on the side of the road and I couldn't start it again. 18 years is a long time to drive a car every day. It really is. Some people get another car every few years. But I guess my thinking was get a great car and keep it. I've only done standard things to this car. Shock absorbers, brake pads, brake rotors, tyres. Servicing every 10,000 Ks. Oil, filter, air cleaner and a fuel filter. Every 10,000 Ks, no matter what. Even if it didn't need the fuel filter, I still did it. And also, uh, always ran the car on 98 fuel. Never anything else, always 98. And you know what? When the engine was pulled down at 600,000 Ks and freshened up, that is where it really showed, it was evident of the 98 fuel because of how clean the engine was inside. It was, it was remarkably clean. The fuel deposits were absolutely minimal. Um, the oil was clean under the rocker covers. There was no sludge buildup. Uh, the engine was really in great condition. I guess the appointment of the Fairlane, I've loved over the years. I've loved the finish of the car, the velour, the fabrics, the right amount of wood grain, just enough. Being a car guy, 
because it's a five litre Windsor, um, there's a lot of heritage there. And although it's fuel in injected, um, it's, uh, they didn't do much to the Windsor in terms of the old pattern. They just bolted some, some new stuff around it. And it has been an incredible engine, absolutely amazing engine. Um, the transmission has been fantastic. Four speed automatic transmission back in the day. Uh, 15 inch wheel with a, a 70 series tyre. You're still around the 2000 RPM doing the speed limit out on the freeway. So you, you've still got a, an older car that is still loping along nicely. Uh, there's nothing high stressed about it. Um, the gearing, I, I believe, uh, it's a fantastic package for 1995. This car has just always been a good, honest car. No clunks, no squeaks or rattles. It's just started and ran beautifully. Long wheelbase, lots of highway work, seven, eight, nine hour stints behind the wheel, sometimes more. Places this car has been, you know, it's, it's almost like as though my brain is like a computer hard drive. It's got no more RAM left when I think of where the car has been. It's more than the old cliche of, oh, it's been everywhere, mate. Everyone says that. The car's been everywhere. Well, it can't go everywhere. But uh, I know it's a figure of speech and it's a very broad one. But uh, the places that it's been, I, I, I honestly can't remember. I can, I, I, it's just too much. It is just too much. 733,000 kilometres on a car. Less 61,000 that I didn't do. <laughs> um, it's still quite a, quite a lot. It's incredible to uh, what you put the car through as well. Um, you know, uh, my son was brought home on the back seat from the hospital as a bub in this car. Uh, he's driving now. <laughs> you know, where did that time go? I uh, built two houses in the time I've had this car. What you put the car through? It's the emotions that, that come with this Fairlane. It's the conversations that you've had in the car. It's the good times you've had in the car. It's the bad times. Um, uh, members of family that um, have passed, that have ridden in that car, um, that aren't with us anymore, you know? Yeah. That's the trouble when you keep a car too long. It comes with all this stuff. It's nice, but um, they're, they're a moving storybook and I, I say on the TV show, you know, a, a moving time capsule. And that's what they are. They really are. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hair and Forbes has the range. When you're passionate about a car that you love, you do tend to keep it a long time. It's been uh, incredibly efficient motoring over 18 years to keep this car. Minimal repairs, 
And I've had people say, oh, you must have had a good one. Well, there's a lot of people out there that have had fair lanes that have had a good one then. This car has seen everything. And I'm not joking, everything. Winds as strong as what we get in this country. Freezing conditions, possibly minus five, minus six. 46 degree heat Celsius, uh, middle of the desert, uh, thumping along at 120, 130 k's an hour in the old day in 40 degree heat, sit on that all day out west. Hailstorms where you think, oh my God, you know, here we go, it's going to be written off. Rain, rain that covers the freeway, lose your visibility, couldn't see, guesswork, been through that. Bushfire smoke, that's scary. You go through bushfire smoke, there's no fun in that. Been through that. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah, I guess it's funny in a way. A lot of people would think, oh, you know, 23 year old car with over 700,000 Ks on it, it's uh, got a busted ass. It doesn't have a busted ass, no. See, I'm a very fussy type person. I like things to work. If it's got a function, make sure it works. I've never had the. I guess the, the analogy of, oh, it's an old car, so it doesn't matter if that doesn't work. As soon as something may have stopped working, fix it straight away. Keep it a good car. This car behind me here, uh, look, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only guy in Australia with a similar story. There'd be people out there that, that have uh, had cars with similar history. Uh, it's uh, not just totally a Mark Fletcher story. It's just the one that I know about. But... Everything on the car works. The air conditioning is icy cold. Uh, the heater works. Everything works. Everything on the control panel works. There's no switches that have decided to go and have a nap for the last 10 years. The features of the car from 1995 too. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the features, even on today's standards. It doesn't have the safety features of today's cars. It's got an airbag on the driver's side. 95% uh, of this car's life, it's just been me there. With a trip computer, cruise control, of course, power steering, four-wheel disc brakes, air conditioning, uh, a heater, uh, and that's climate control, obviously, as well. Uh, that all works. Like I said, there's nothing in the car that doesn't. Right, a little bit of a segment on today's show, totally left field, don't know if you know or not, but behind the scenes I actually like to cook. And you might be thinking, well, what's this got to do with classic cars or classic vehicles? Well, it's got everything to do with classic vehicles. Uh, Picture, E.H. Holden, uh, nothing goes hand in hand with that like the good old Aussie barbecue. And Fletchy's going to learn you. Yeah, you might be having a bit of a hard time, got the ass hanging out. Look, this is how you feed the average family of four on a really tight budget. And when it comes time too for the barbecue, make sure that you dress sensibly for the occasion. Don't be lured in by the neighbours thinking that stubby shorts, singlets, t-shirts and thongs is the correct apparel to cook an Aussie barbecue. See, when it comes to food, it's like dressing. Preparation and presentation is everything. Now this is Fletchy's state-of-the-art barbecue, complete with a half a bag of potting mix. There's even a wheel missing because, and the timber frame has deteriorated due to neglect and left out in the weather since 1998. First of all, in any barbecue situation, to obtain heat onto the plate, you have to light it first. Open the valve on the gas bottle so that the gas fills the gas line. Grab the knob, push, and turn to open the cock. Next, the barbecue burner will start to warm up because it has ignited. Now this is where the segment gets clever. Feeding a family of four with this onto the plate it goes. Now don't be intimidated by upmarket neighbours and their fancy bloody barbecue tools. You're on a budget, remember? So use these tools from your shed to turn your sausage and to, and to poke holes in your healthy sausage too, to let the fat out. Next thing you know, your sausage is cooked to perfection. Slice Mr. Sausage up the middle with the old Stanley knife and throw in a bit of extra hot chilli sauce for the kids. Okay, so now we're done. How do we feed four people? Watch this. It's simple. Grab a hold of your sausage and cut it in to four pieces. 
simple. It's as easy as that. Now, remember this formula. You might want to write it down or make a, a wall chart out of it for your kitchen. Cut sausage into five pieces for five people. Cut sausage into four pieces for four people. Cut sausage into three pieces for three people. If there are just two of you, well, you can have half each. And if you're by yourself, you can pig out and eat the lot. And that was Fletchy's cooking tip for this week. Stay tuned, because next time, there's gonna be some Pace Farm eggs on the barbie. See ya. I have everything insured with Shannon's, including the HSV. Why not consider getting your house and contents together and giving Shannon's a call for a quote? And if you have anything to do with a classic bike, car or a truck club, list it with the Shannon's Club for all the world to see. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems. Finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. I always said that any car to come along and replace the fair lane, it had to be special. And uh, that's what the fair lane meant to me. It was so hard parking it, putting it into retirement, disconnecting the battery and knowing that you weren't going to start it again for X amount of time. I guess I've got thoughts where I might just let the thing go another seven years and then put some club redger on it and then bring it out of hibernation then and maybe uh, relive some old times and enjoy the car. But in the meantime, uh, for this chapter, this special car here behind me came along. Um, I did a lot of research before I bought this car. I really did. Um, it's a big investment to, to get a vehicle such as this and uh, something not to be flippant about. I certainly don't have a history of having top-end cars like this one. It's the first time in my life, really. Um, although, back in the time, in 2000, to get the Fairlane, as I alluded to earlier, four years old, just on four years old, that to me was a, a giant step up back then. But this car here is very special. And all I can say is that don't let anybody tell you for a second that one of these is just a hotted up Commodore because it's far from that. And the testimony to that statement is that it's a HSV. Um, their work is just, it, it is amazing. It's a, a world-class uh, level. Um, the enhancements that they do to these vehicles, it's, it's just incredible. Um, for example, the brakes. I've never felt brakes pull up a car like this. Um, six piston up front, four piston in the rear. Um, it's also the little enhancements, such as the interiors where HSV have their own seats. Um, I guess the interface unit on the dashboard, the electronics, um, the EDI system on the panel, you've got a whole range of options. In terms of the engine, well, I guess there's a bit of tradition there with myself liking the American product. 
um, 6.2 litres of Chevrolet and, and supercharged, well, that uh, kind of fits the bill. It gets back into that special category, I guess, of replacing the Fairlane. Uh, it's 430 kilowatt standard. I think it's a nine pound boost on the supercharger and you can wind them up. Fuel economy is interesting. She likes a drink, it does. I can't say she's incredibly economical, uh, but I read one review where if you buy a car like this for fuel economy, well, you bought the totally incorrect vehicle. You have to pay the price to fuel the beast. The VF is certainly the, the last of the true uh, Australian built muscle car. And you're searching long and deep in the European market to get even close. Well, you can't for the money. You're looking at a quarter of a million dollars and over to get close to one of these. It's not just about the power, it's about the, the comfort on the inside as well. I was used to a, a plush interior with the Fairlane. Um, this is plush in another way. There's more, it, it's stitched leather. Uh, the seats bolster very, very well. You can tell just by looking at the shape of the seats that um, you're in for a comfortable ride. So it's luxury at a different level. It's the refinements that this Aussie built car has, like the, um, the magnetic suspension, for example, uh, that continually adjusts to the road conditions. Things that are fairly, uh, well, have been unheard of in the past from uh, an Australian built car, down to things that you might take for granted, such as heated seats. Um, the list goes on. You've also got that wide track and that nice long wheelbase, that stance and that st lateral stability that, um, that obviously helps keep you on the road as well. Uh, 275 tyres, uh, low profile, uh, they do a great job. Um, it's got a beautiful stereo in there with Bose speakers. Uh, I've, had, I've hardly had the thing on. Um, I, just, I just drive along and listen to the car. Even just accelerating from 60 kilometres an hour, the, the noise is nice. Um, and obviously you, you have your three settings as well. Um, you've got your touring mode, uh, performance mode and track mode. <laughs> and the binodal function on the induction and exhaust note changes as well. So adaptive to how you drive. So if you are into it, everything changes. I think what we have to remind ourselves of here is that a bunch of very, very clever people um, put these cars together. There's a lot of refinement in this car behind me. It's been put there by millions and millions of dollars of R&D. Um, clever people, clever people. We get in our cars, we might go to the shop and come back. We take them for granted, but we're driving something extremely high tech these days. This car was special in another way too. Uh, my son, 18 years of age, uh, I wanted him involved. Um, I mean, what guy doesn't like a HSV? And I kept it a big secret and I was researching for weeks and weeks and weeks. I looked at Ford, I looked at FPV, and look, you know, I've always loved my Fords. At the end of the day, uh, when, when you do your research, the, the VF, it's just the, it's just the better car in 2018. Um, and that's, that's just the way it is. So, made the decision to get it. And um, I, live around about an hour and a half away from North Sydney, which is where the, the car was sitting in the dealership. And I thought, well, how am I gonna get up there and get this car? So um, my son's got a ute and uh, he's very proud of his, uh, of his BA Falcon ute. And I said to him, look, we need a, we need a four o'clock in the morning start. I've got to go to North Sydney. I've got to get some, uh, some racking for the shed. And uh, yeah, he was in that, cause you know, he likes early starts going for a drive, you know. And, uh, but basically it was uh, just an excuse to get up there to bring the car back. And uh, we parked around the corner, went to the dealership. And I said, look, we've got a bit of time, you know, before the, before the, the shelving company opens. Um, do you want to go and look in the dealership there? And you never know, they might have a HSV we can have a look at. Yeah, okay, he said. So I went in there and uh, the sales guy came out and he was all, you know, he was all lined up for this. And it was a big surprise. The door opened up and there was a HSV sitting there. And uh, I said to my son, what do you think of that? Whoa, would you like to sit in it? Really? Hmm. Would you like to start it? What? Start it? Yeah, go and sit in and start it. I said to the salesman, is it okay if he starts it? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. So then he uh, started it in this big 
came to life. You know, it was like a, a jaw-dropping experience for him. And then I reached in and I said, do you like the car? He said, oh, do I ever? And I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, welcome to Dad's new car. <laughs> All I can say, if there's a car that you're really attached to, that you drive every day and it needs to be replaced, just make sure you replace it with something extra special because then that'll uh, help the pain when uh, you retire your old one. <laughs> Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, where I have rolled out the old and wheeled in the new, ready to begin another chapter. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. <laughs>